Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Tim Brown. And I am Vinny Colasimo. And today we're talking about Google Ads for contractors in particular. We're going to actually give away exactly what's working in the ad accounts that we're managing. We're talking about the principles, and we're going to give examples of those ads. Yes, sir. Vinny, uh, what is the first key to creating effective Google Ads? Yeah. So... Really quickly, we're going to break down the keys into kind of two different sections. Uh, one of the biggest keys is writing effective ads. And there is so much that goes into that. We kind of split that up into five different keys for writing ads that convert. So the first five are going to be basically copywriting tips. How do you get people to click on them and buy your stuff? Get leads. So we're actually giving away all the tips that we've got. In some cases, you might be the business owner doing Google ads. And I think that that makes sense in some cases. You might be a marketing manager. We're gonna actually try to help you make better ads. So yes. let's let's go with the first one. What's the first call to action? Uh, the first one is make your call to actions stand out. So if you're new to Google ads uh, or you haven't tested them out before, including call to actions is in incredibly important. Um, you say make your app call to action stand up. So you're you're not just saying uh, get a quote. You're right. actually you have to make it more compelling. Yes, absolutely. A big theme that we're going to talk about throughout this is that there's lots of people advertising for the same exact thing that you are. The core theme is how can you be different? How can you make your call to actions in this example stand out? Like this example, book a free quote in under one minute. That's quick. People are on Google to get quick answers. If you can give them a quick, fast solution uh, with a unique call to action, they're definitely more likely to click on your ad. Awesome. All right. Number two, ad example and key to better Google ads. So what is that one? Include trust factors. So this is just like a general marketing tip for writing and, and all of your content. But in ads particularly, again, standing out, what do you have that other roofers, other contractors don't have in terms of trust? Or maybe they do, but maybe it's a certification, GAF, Master Elite Certified. Uh, maybe you have 500 five-star reviews on Google. Whatever you can include in there that's quick and makes people trust your ad. I like this more. one, family owned since 2005. I like that. Yeah. So anything that you can do, I always say it in, uh, in our kickoffs with clients, like, what can you say that other people can't say? Yeah. Um, and you might be sick of some of these things, like BBB, you know, mm -hmm. it's it feels like a scam to some business owners because like 70 bucks a month and you just got to pay yeah. and then you have an A plus or whatever. Right. But most homeowners don't necessarily think that way. Yeah. And so use the things, use the basic things to help people trust you. Yeah. Trust is such a big deal in marketing. Absolutely. And people are, they're looking for fast solutions, but they're looking for something that's going to provide an answer to what they're searching for. So if they trust that you're going to provide that answer, they're more likely to click on your ad. Awesome. What's the number three? Number three. Key. Yeah. Is identify and showcase unique value proposition. So this kind of ties into trust factors a little bit in the sense that you're trying to say something different, something unique about your uh, your construction business that other people can't say. I'll bring this camera in a little closer. Yeah. Um, so this ad, for example, this might not be applicable to everyone. This is just a specific use case. Uh, get a new roof for $79.95. I know some roofing contractors out there watching might be like $79.95. That's way too cheap for a roof. Um, for this contractor in specific, it makes sense. It's like a starting rate. And this ad converts. Um, so maybe it's not that exactly, but what can you say to draw people in? Mm, I dig it. All right. What's the next one? This is Hey, actually, you know what? Let me pause for a second. Yeah. If you have questions, uh, pop them below in this video. If you ask the question during the video, during the live, we'll answer it at the end. Any questions about Google ads, anything you're curious about um, related to contractors, we'll try to answer it at the end here. So ask your questions, we'll answer. All right. Nothing's off limits either. Make yeah. it spicy. If you got a spicy question, yeah, let's do it. We'll answer it. Um, definitely. Yeah. Appreciate it. Anyone watching this, please like and um, like the video. Let's get this thing up so more people can um, do better on their Google ads. Let's like, we're just a different kind of company. We want to share what we learn yeah. along the way. We're going to share it. Even if you don't work with us, that's just what we're doing. Yeah.
So to call only ads, why are you doing them? Call only ads are a different approach. They're not text-based, they are call-based. Uh, we mentioned this before, but people are looking for fast answers when they're on Google. They're looking for a roofing contractor, they're looking for a plumber, they want a fast answer. If you can have an ad that just has your phone number, they know what they searched. That's a phone number that seems to maybe provide an answer, click it and call. It's low risk for the person that's clicking it. If they don't, doesn't work out, whatever. It was a couple minutes wasted. Um, so they're a really good type of ad to test out and they can generate more calls if that's how your lead flow works. I was actually talking to Tommy Mello yesterday. He said they were being a little sneaky and putting the, the phone number just in the ad text mm -hmm. in general, separate, not call only ads. And then so people would call and it wouldn't charge them because they'd call the number. Mm -hmm. But then your ad quality score goes down. Yeah. And sometimes Google will flag you for that. So yeah. that's like black market Google tips. Yeah. That's, I don't endorse that tip. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm basically saying <laughs> I'm just, avoid it, but it's very, yeah. uh, very interesting. Um, all right, Trevor, how do you track the click and conversions to know where an inquiry came from? Um, so we'll get that question answered here yep. in the video as well. Let's get into the next key. Always yeah. utilize, utilize available extensions. What does this yes. mean? So this is kind of all encompassing. Extensions are just a major key in general for any ad account, but especially for contractors. The biggest thing with extensions is that they take up more uh, more space on the page. Mm -hmm. So if you can show up in a bigger area, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, and then what these extensions are, we can go through a couple of the examples that are kind of essentials for contractors. Um, so what, Tim, which one of these sticks out to you? And I can maybe dive mm, a little deeper. Location? Location. Uh, if you can have an image, yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's a newer one in the last like five I didn't even know that you could do a promotion in there. What does that mean? So let's say you're running a fall promotion. Uh, you've got a deal, it's X amount off um, a new roof or whatever mm. it may be. You can run a specific, uh, it'll have a little tag at the bottom and says promo, get yeah. X amount off your new roof or whatever it might say. Um, a location extension is great because that's almost another trust factor as well. It's I know this contractor is close to where I am. Um, and all of these extensions, a big misconception is, oh, do I have to pay more for, for these extensions? You don't have to pay more. It's it's the same cost per click that your ad would be, just takes up more space. So why do people not do them? Because they don't know what they are for the yeah. most part. And, and they it don't seems know. like, yeah, maybe it's gonna, I'm gonna be charged more. Yeah. I mean, it takes more time. Yep. I think that that's the thing. You gotta watch anything that you're spending thousands of dollars a month on, mm -hmm. you gotta watch trying to take the, take the easy route on Google ads. Yeah. Like if you don't fill this stuff out completely and get it yeah. all in there and think about it and make sure it's good, yeah. you could be pissing money down the drain every yeah. single month yeah, on absolutely. your Google ads. So just make sure, like, I just think this is a very good principle in marketing in general. Just be comprehensive. If it's worth mm -hmm. being there, it's worth being there in the, in the right way. Yeah. Another big one to mention is like a call extension. You can see it kind of in the example down here, um, but it's just one more way to include, they can just call right from your ad. So all of these extensions, almost every extension available, you should try to use Tim mentioned image extension. That's really cool. Show a picture of a roof that you've done recently. Show a, you know, a customer a picture of some sort. Um, those are things that instantly increase click through rate. Is there any kind of pictures that you've seen work very well? Like, is there, what do you, what kind of principles are you thinking about if you choose a picture for something like that? Um, kind of the same thing. We'll talk about landing pages later, but just making it an extension of your ad. Uh, so an example to what, match the, the right. topic. So if you're advertising for roofs, you know, just including a picture of a salesperson might not really make sense. But if you have someone up on a roof in a photo, um, or a happy customer in front or of a happy roof. customer. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, cool. All right. So now we're getting a little bit more nitty gritty on the keys to managing your account. Copy, mm -hmm. We started with copywriting first because copywriting is a little bit more accessible for some people, but yeah. I mean, Managing your account is a big deal. Um, yeah. If you have spent like, let's say thousand hours plus working on Google ads, you've learned some things about how to do this more efficiently. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of PPC guys always tell me that, uh, that like 
the structure of an ad account really matters. Yeah. Before we get into these keys, why what is the structure like making a clean structure, an intelligible structure on your Google yeah. ad account matter? So as at Hook Agency, at least, we kind of have a love hate relationship with Google, right? Yeah. We work with them, uh, and in Google Ads particularly, we want to work with them, but we don't want to let them like bully us, basically. Yeah. Um, so the way we work with them is by making it very clear what we're advertising and providing a really good structure so that Google doesn't kind of push us around and tell us to do, hey, change this. Or honestly, sometimes Google gets confused if you have a confusing structure. So if you just have like all of it in one right. campaign and you're, you're advertising 20 different services, right. you're saying that can actually like negatively affect your efficiency yes. of your ad spend? Absolutely. Yeah. Being specific and starting off simple. Don't just make one campaign, one ad group with 90 broad match keywords and be like, let's see what kind of leads come in because yeah. you're going to waste money and Google's going to give you really low quality scores and it's just not going to be good. So yeah, structuring. Awesome. Thank you. If you're just joining us, like the video, pop a, uh, a comment in a question that you guys might have and we'll answer them at the end. Thank you guys. All right. So let's get into your, your next five keys for great Google ads for contractors. Yep. Talk to me about this one choosing the right keywords this is kind of a two-parter so choosing the right keywords and then also watching how they perform uh, so continual watching and and performance and optimizations we have a whole slide for that but it's super super important so um so this is a screenshot of the tool arefs mm -hmm. um, obviously you got other tools here for yeah. keyword research talk to me about you know, what they're good for. Yeah. So Google Keyword Planner is going to be kind of the most accessible. It's completely free and it's actually baked into Google Ads. Uh, the, the metrics that you can get, like keyword projections, how many people are going to be searching those terms roughly in the next month? You need those numbers before you set things live so that you're not shooting in the dark. Um, keyword research and just, again, kind of going along the lines of structuring, it's important to have all your ducks in a row before you start because you can waste money really fast if you mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. So using... So you're kind of slow. I, I know from experience, like you're kind of slow, even though contractors are sometimes like, just let's, let's mm -hmm. spend 5K right away. Yeah. You kind of slow them down a little bit. Yes. Why does that matter? I mean, like realistically, I'm sure that other, if somebody else is running ads for somebody, mm -hmm. like you could just crank up the budget. Mm -hmm. Why do you go slow kind of leveling it up over time? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us as an agency is just being smart with how we're using our clients' money. Um, you can crank up the budget and you'll get a ton of data really fast, but you'll also get a lot of those failures that because you're going to fail on yeah. Google Ads. There's going to be keywords that don't work. You waste money on them. It's going to happen. You just want to make sure you're learning from those. Right. And not spending. If you can spend a hundred or a thousand dollars and learn a failure, why spend ten thousand dollars and learn that same exact thing so that's why we start slow learn what's working what doesn't work and then ramp up from there okay so out of google keyword planner arefs spyfu semrush what's your favorite tool for keyword research for ppc i think that i don't know if i'd say it's my favorite but the most accessible easy to use most user friendly um would be google keyword planner okay. it's baked right in there and you know if you believe what google's telling you it's relatively accurate in terms of projections and things like that. Cool. Yeah. What's uh, talk to me about this broad match, phrase match, exact match. I yeah. get hung up on this because I'm not a Google ads expert. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, asking you questions. I like digging into it. Yeah. I'm curious all the time, yeah. but like, I always think like exact match is the way to go <laughs> yeah. because I like, I like being really specific and efficient with my money. And I just yeah. want I want to rank for this, or I want to be up at the top for this, 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 this. Right. And like, don't put me in there for anything else. Cause I've spent a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Cause it, you have to do pretty vigorous negative keywords. Like yeah. negative keyword just means you're saying something you don't want to show up for. I think it's right. really important to do that regularly. Yes. Absolutely. But like, I don't, you know, like it's hard to do it as vigorously as you need to do it unless you're doing this full time. Right. Um, or you have somebody doing it full time. So talk to me about like, when to use these other kinds. I like yeah. exact match. And I yeah. guess talk, talk yeah, what's what the they are. Yeah. So basically what the and if you're if you're familiar with SEO, 
this is still a brand new concept. A yeah. lot of even SEO specialists here don't know, or like, what do you yeah. mean match type? Um, so there's three different kinds of match types. Basically, in a nutshell, what this is doing is telling Google how much control we want to give them. Not necessarily control, but like how liberal do we want to be with what we're showing up mm -hmm. for. So exact match, kind of like it sounds, is somebody has to search exact, let's say roofing company, someone has to search exactly that term, or it has to be included in their search query in order for our ad to show In this up. case, can it be company roofing? It can, I believe it can be flipped, okay. yes. Yeah. So it has to be the exact term, or they're constantly updating that. So yeah. I could be wrong, but yeah. I think it can be flipped. Yeah. Um, the it, it has to just be included in there. It's like almost exactly that. So yeah. phrase match, phrase that. Match. So roofing company, you'd show up for that. And you might also show up for a roofing contractor. Yeah. You'd show up for terms that are closely related, but it's a little bit of taking the, letting the reins loose a little bit. Yeah. Broad match is, you know, if you have roofing company as a broad match keyword, somebody can search roofing supplies or Home Depot, Home Depot shingles yeah. and your, your ad might show up. Cause they're like, we know this person yeah. might be in the market. Right. And that's where this can spend your money really quick. Yes. But it also spends your money really quick. So that, I mean, Lots it of can research. be a positive. Yeah. It could be a positive too. If you're, I mean, a strategy is if you want to learn really fast, what are people searching? What terms should I go after? Broad match keywords are good for gathering a ton of data mm, in like this that. specific market. What are people searching? Let's throw a roofing company out there. See what we get. You're going to spend money to do that research, yeah. um, but it could be valuable research. Um, and you mentioned a really, really good point is negative keywords. Um, so one thing that you definitely want to be doing is, is adding in things that you don't want to show up for. Supplies, tools, mm -hmm. shingles specifically, things like that, that uh, you know right off the bat. And then continually adding more negative keywords in. Yeah, I just saw somebody who was getting their ads managed by, by a PPC company and it's just like, Roofing sales salary is like basically our roofing marketing, anything with mm -hmm. roofing in it. Cause I remember Googling stuff for us mm -hmm. um, and seeing and seeing them, their ads in there, which is like, watch out for that. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of things adjacent to roofing that you don't, or whatever you're doing that mm -hmm. you don't want to show up for. So, yeah. So a big thing is testing, which I mean, you, you want to play with these, see what works best for you. Every market is different. That's why we, we, that's another reason we ramp up is because we want to test which, which match type is going to be best for this. Um, one thing to note too, if you have like a branded campaign, if I'm advertising hook agency, I would want to use exact match in that specific case, exact match. So that's a specific scenario where I don't want to show up for anything besides yeah. that exactly that. Yeah. Um, so branding, broad match, or uh, exact match is really good. Thank you. All right, next one. Mm -hmm. Know your numbers. Uh, this goes back into keyword research. Keyword research ties into this. But basically, we've got the most simplistic ROI calculator ever. Close deals from Google Ads minus the money you spent. There's your return on investment. Is so, there something that you're shooting for? What's like a good return on investment? Are we talking... Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of, for us, we're able to, you know, at least 5x yeah. when, it, when it comes to return on investment. Uh, that would probably be like the lowest bar yeah. that we would want to get. That's not to say, it, it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you're starting with a very strict, small budget, you know, making 1.5 times what you've spent in might be worth it for you. Mm. I don't um, think that would ever be worth it for me. I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, but if you're a solo contractor, yeah. you're a one man band and you want to spend a little bit on Google ads, uh, you know, maybe making, for brand or something to right. have your brand. But I think in general, yeah, to me, like I'm hunting for that five X, 10 X number. I yeah. think that we can say like without BSing that we are shooting for 10 X, Yeah, you know, yeah. in general and five X is a kind of that lower end and 10 X yeah. is like getting up there. You really want to be trying to. Yeah. That up. If you think about it, if you spend $2,000 on Google ads a month what, and you get seven leads and you only close one of them, if it's a full roof replacement, I mean, that could be a $40,000 deal. Yeah. It so, also, yeah, exactly. What, like how, 
how expensive like yeah. we're talking about commercial roofing and, and metal roofing and stuff yeah. like that like if the deal is uh, is 40,000 to 140,000 yeah it's a little bit different of mm -hmm. like what you're willing to accept yeah and maybe you're going to spend a little more money yeah. to get those leads because yeah. they are more competitive yeah uh, diving back into again the number one goal is to make money we're not you can do branding stuff with google ads what <laughs> you can do branding stuff uh but if you to ever make money have someone suggest to you like let's just get our brand name out there with google ads <laughs> i don't know about that like <laughs> i want to make money and we want to make our clients money with yeah. google ads it's not really worth it for anything else yeah uh, and br branding is nice yeah but it's just too much to spend on branding right i've even toyed with like promoting like a piece of content let's yeah. say and just because i thought you know early on in my ads journey i thought that might be worth it yeah um it's not <laughs> it's <laughs> more of, unless you have a very strong like a form or clear something call to act like yeah. if, if this call if this piece of com um content does turn into a big call to action maybe yeah like, yeah, but in general, you're going to avoid right. things like that. So Otherwise, you're just going to drain your money. Yeah. So knowing your numbers, I don't know if they can see it on here. I'll run through them. So these are numbers to know. I'm just and keeping on moving this closer. It's important closer. to know these. If you've never run Google ads before, you might not know some of these, but that's where keyword research comes in, like finding out projected clicks. If you have historical data, you can know I get on average this many clicks a month. This is how much they cost. If you don't know, that's when you would use like Google Keyword Planner to get some projections. You wanna know how much you're gonna spend, set a budget. I'm gonna spend $2,000, $5,000, whatever it is. Uh, your conversion rate, that's another one that historically, if you have an ad account, you'll know roughly how well your ads convert. If not industry standard, I would say you could expect, you know, five to 8% as just a rough ballpark of how many people click, to how many people turn into leads. Um, this one you should for sure know your lead value. So if you get seven leads in, they're all worth 10 grand, that's a $70,000 worth of lead value. Mm -hmm. And then your closing rate. How often do you, you know, if you get seven leads, how many of those will your salespeople close or how many will you close? Um, taking that information, laying it out so you know great, I can get five leads and I spent $10,000, but is that worth it for me? No. Am I closing enough? Um, so just knowing those numbers is really important. Hey, I, I have a fun question. Maybe this is from a contractor's perspective mm -hmm. out here. Let's say you have somebody running your Google ads and there's kind of this tension between why aren't you closing more deals <laughs> yeah. if you're the ad guy? Yeah. Yep. Um, and as a ad guy, like, or I guess as a contractor, mm -hmm. you're thinking like, well, some of these are bad. Like, yeah. like for instance, Facebook ads, we don't do Facebook ads. Not that there isn't some value to it. I just don't think they're the highest value leads. I've yeah. seen some people spending $50 on just basically nonsense, like very low intent leads. Just throwing a blanket on I'm there. not saying that some people don't do it well. It's just harder to get consistent results. And you have that very good creative. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of elements to that. Yeah. So if you're the contractor and you're saying these leads aren't great like mm -hmm. do i have to be doing repairs for these to make sense like mm -hmm. what is your take on that i think that there's an interesting if you're getting a lot of repair leads and you don't offer repairs this is my ppc guy yeah, like yeah. you need to change no that's not at all i actually but, think people should if they're doing ppc but, ads i do think that doing repairs is part right. of it a little bit so maybe it's a little bit of self-reflection or company yeah. reflection oh we're getting these leads we just don't want them yeah. to be one but there is the the ppc person's responsibility if you're getting bad leads which you will get a bad lead i promise you'll get someone just that's one. At least someone's going to fill out a form and ask for cheese whiz or something yeah, like yeah. they're going to be, they're going to, cause sometimes people don't read. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to get bad leads uh, at times. The, the whoever's managing the account, it's their responsibility to do everything they can to mitigate that. You should be able to turn that cheese whiz lead into a closed <laughs> a roofing full deal. synthetic roof replacement. Yeah. If you can't do that, you're falling down yeah. on your sales. So there's a balance. No, no, exactly. Yeah, there's a balance between maybe the contractor could work with their sales team a little better. Yeah. Maybe they need to expand their services. I do think like us challenging people occasionally, like what are you guys doing for sales training and those types of things yeah. is important because if you're spending money on leads and, and your sales guys 
could have a cl higher closing rate. Right. That is a conversation. Yeah. It's and just not the only thing. Yeah. There is things that we can do to trim out bad leads a little bit. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Google Ads, I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about it is it, it kind of does make you think a little bit more about your business and you're probably going to get an influx of, of leads or more than you would without Google Ads, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it makes you analyze some of your processes internally and, and think about how can we field these leads better. Yeah. All right. The next one, choose the right bidding strategy. So if you've never done Google Ads, this might be like, what are you even saying right now? Uh, a bidding strategy is basically how are we going to bid on keywords? Because we're paying per click and we want to do that efficiently and effectively. There's two different ways to do this. You can do manual bidding, which is very technical. And for most contractors, if you're new or even if you have a little bit of experience, it doesn't really make sense a lot of times to manually manage your bids. I think as a non-PPC guy, I think I automatically just go right. towards clicks. Because I don't think Google right. is smart. Right. And you're telling me Google might be smarter than I think? Google is pretty smart. Yeah, yeah. it so is. I, but... If I say maximize conversions, it's actually going to maximize conversions? It will. You have to work with it. Okay. So different bidding strategy. You made a really good point about like one of the bidding strategies is maximize clicks. And when I first started in PPC and a big mistake I see contractors make is, make is like, yeah, maximize clicks. We want people to yeah. click so they come in, into our ads. Um, but that's really just putting your ads in front of as many people as possible. Clicks are not the goal. Yeah. Leads are the goal. Yeah. Um, so if I can get, again, that same example, if I can get a thousand clicks and get seven leads, or I can get a hundred clicks and get seven leads, I want to pay for only a hundred yeah. clicks. So what Google does with these different bidding strategies, maximize clicks, target cost per acquisition, maximize conversions, is it's analyzing the data, who's clicking and who's converting, and it's trying to position your ads in a way in maximize conversions, it's trying to position your ads in a way that they'll put your ads in more situations where it will convert. Mm. Um, one thing to note with this is uh, like target CPA, that means target cost per acquisition or cost per lead. So if you want to get a lead, you only want to spend 150 bucks for a lead. And you're like, well, maybe I can get away with, you know, a little bit lower. I'm going to set my target CPA at 100 bucks so then I can really make money. What you're actually doing is limiting Google because it's you're telling Google do like I want you to do this, but then you're also putting giant constraints on it. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you're choosing the right bidding strategy for what your goal is and then also allowing Google to maximize that mm -hmm. strategy. Awesome. I appreciate it. Well, we are, we have two more, I think. Um, and then we're going to answer any questions you guys got. So like the video comment um, and we'll answer it. If, if you ask later, let's say you're watching this back later and you comment on the Facebook or the YouTube video, we'll also try to answer that question. Vinny will have any, Vinny uh, answering questions in those comments. So, yeah. All right, what is this? A ABO. Yeah, I trademarked this right before. Okay, nice. <laughs> Coining a term, I like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, always be optimizing. That's my attempt at being trendy, you know? No, I like that. <laughs> I mean, hey, an SEO tip is coining a term because if you really own that term, people will link back to your description about right. what it is. So I like it. ABO. Yeah. Good SEO strategy too. <laughs> yeah. So this, I mentioned this before, but you have to monitor your ad account. You can't just set it up and let it run and be like, sweet. I'll come back in a month and I'll have my seven leads waiting for me or my 10 or whatever it is. You have to be looking at key performance indicators. I have a screenshot here of conversion rate and cost per conversion. Uh, how many clicks are we getting? So if we see something like this where it's 0% conversion rate and we have 20 clicks, why is that? So we have to, there's so much that goes into optimization, mm -hmm. but just continually checking in on things and questioning why is this happening and then trying to make changes to improve that metric. So another really important thing is, is checking your search terms report. So this is specifically on, on keywords. A search terms report is basically, I have a campaign with all these keywords. You can click on your search terms report and it's gonna tell you what people are searching, the actual things they typed into the search bar for your ads to show up. So like our previous example, if you're a roofing contractor, you've got a broad match roofing contractor keyword and you look through your search terms report and it's 
50 names of other contractors and like, I don't want to show up for my competitors. Maybe you do, but, <laughs> um, or it's like roofing supplies or Home Depot roofing. Like you want to be looking at that search term report consistently and adding those in as negative keywords or changing your keywords so that you're not showing up for those things. Little interlude before we do the last one here. How do you feel about branded search when competitors are going after somebody? What is your real take on that from a PPC perspective? Like if I'm a company and someone's bidding on my... Or just, you know, you're dispassionate about this. What do you think is the right thing to do? I think... Mm, this is tough. Putting me in a corner here. No, I, I, just um, hear the real, I just want to hear the real thing. I don't like bidding on other people's branded keywords. I think it starts a petty bidding war and then yeah. they start bidding on yours. Yeah. And really, if someone is searching for, if we're talking about hook and someone's searching for XYZ agency and we're targeting that agency and we show up, they might call us but they're like, oh, I thought you were this company, but you're mm -hmm. not. So, I mean, there is a little bit of like, oh, but you could close that deal. You could flip that deal. Uh, I just think it's a lot of effort to not get that much return. I mean, I guess my real philosophy, I'll just give you my take, is that you want to align with the customer's intent. Right. You want to align and be there every single time that they have an intent to find somebody like you. Yeah. Um, so if that if that alignment happens in other companies' brands mm -hmm. for you, go for it. I also think that it's a negative PR thing. Yeah. A little bit yes. of a PR thing. And, and hey, this is just a couple of people's perspective. Mm -hmm. Do what's best for you. Um, certainly... Those can be good yeah. keywords. So I, I mean, yeah. there is a, there's something to be said. If you just yeah. have roofing contractor, you're not trying to target it, yeah. but you show up for all Anybody, the people that yeah. have roofing. Yeah, you don't have to add them in as negative keywords. Yeah. Um, that's Boom. the other side. All right. <laughs> well, we're giving you both sides here, <laughs> and definitely brand, uh, bid for your brand. Yes, especially if people are going after it. All right. Let's talk about ensuring conversion focused landing pages. So, yes. why does this matter? This matters for two reasons. You want to make the overlord, Google, you want to make them happy and you want to make people happy and you want them to convert really easily. Um, so I guess maybe I should ask you as a website designer, what are some key principles for converting or like a conversion focused yeah. landing page? I guess in this example, you can see we've got the form right away. Um, actually, you, you might not be able to say this very well in the live, but there's actually like a picture of a, a man with his kid on his shoulders. He's, they're both smiling and there's a roof in the background. So there's like kind of this emotionally persuasive, persuasive imagery. We've got the ratings on the key platforms. So you don't even need to go elsewhere because we've already got the ratings curated here for you. And then we've got a bunch of manufacturers stuff and we've got a link to a video. So if you want a little bit more and we've got a very kind of nice headline that's about the customer mm -hmm. protect yeah. your family and home mm -hmm. and so it's really to me it's about creating trust mm -hmm. and it's a little bit of persuasion yeah so trust persuasion ask for the business yes don't yeah. do all the trust and persuasion stuff if you don't ask for the business so for a lot of roofing contractors on the, on the roofing contractor side we like to hit, hit it with a, a lead form right away that's mm -hmm. not super long that's key too yeah not a ton of fields and then on the uh, the other, sometimes there's more aesthetic contractors. We might show a little bit more of like a portfolio of images mm -hmm. and then um, it's a little softer call to action. I feel like the more aesthetic and when it's very expensive too, mm -hmm. like if it's, if it's something that's $50,000 right. or above, I you want to go a little slower mm -hmm. on asking for the business. I yeah. think that's probably not a bad principle in general, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the design side. And those are all principles that we yeah. use for designing PPC landing page pages. Uh, the Google side of things, the Google ads side of things is Google actually, so you put this URL, whatever this landing page is, in your ads, because that's where people are going to go when they click on it. Google analyzes this landing page. So it wants to see what are your keywords and then your ads, are they using those keywords? Does it make sense that we're advertising, if we're advertising roofing contractor, we shouldn't, our ad copy shouldn't say, get your free cheese whiz. Mm -hmm. And when you go on to, so it should be a continuation of your keywords. Your landing page should be a continuation of your ads. So Google wants to see that you're using the keywords in the landing page. Your, uh, like the, it has a metric, which 
isn't necessarily all that important, important, but landing page experience. So how long are people spending on the landing page? And those all factor into how likely Google is to show your ads. So landing page relevancy is extremely important. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, anyone have any questions? So I'm going to start with the one that we've got in the uh, comments now, yeah. and then we'll move on to your guys' questions. So ask any questions you've got related to contractor ads. You've got a guy who's sitting in these ad accounts 40 hours a week, who's constantly optimizing, constantly seeing stuff that fails, yeah, stuff that succeeds. So pick his brain, pick yeah. his brain here. Um, so what we've got here from Trevor is how do you track the click and conversion to know where an inquiry is coming from? So like if they got a lead, yeah. how do you track which, yeah, which keywords? Thing, yeah, exactly. Came from? Like I was in, yeah, and I can yeah. talk to that too a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest, th a big thing that contractors need to do, this is another key is setting up conversion tracking. Yeah. So implementing that into your Google ads account, there's a couple of different ways you can use Google tag manager, you can use Google analytics and, and set up a, a goal completion, a really to go on a little tangent here, like setting up a goal completion for reaching a thank you page. So yeah. they click on an ad, they fill out a form and it goes to a thank you page. That can be a trigger to tell mm -hmm. Google, hey, we got a conversion. So having that set up, you will know exactly which keyword, exactly which ad triggered that conversion. So a big theme that we always talk about, be tracking. Tracking is huge to your business. Know your numbers, mm -hmm. know your numbers. That's the only thing, track and know your numbers. I guess I was doing two things, track, and know your numbers. It's such a big deal for then you to come to the end of this year and say, I know where this these leads came from. Yeah. And hey, you know why we preach tracking so hard? Because we know mm -hmm. Google is one of the best lead sources mm -hmm. for converting. And not only like how many people came in, not how many leads you had, but how many closed deals you had. Right. Besides referral, it's and, like the number yeah. one. So. And you need that attribution. Yeah. You because if you're if you don't have conversion tracking set up and you don't know which keywords are working, you're just spending money and you're mm -hmm. like, well, this one got 500 clicks. Is this a good one? So you need to have conversion tracking set up. Otherwise, you're just spending money for clicks. And I just looked through an ad account um, of a client that, or sorry, not an ad account, a call rail account. So we use call rail to track yeah. where these. Um, calls are coming from. You can actually listen to, back to the calls and yeah. hey, maybe you want to be in there and and listen to uh, the how your your customer service person yeah. is answering the call and make sure it's consistent. A lot of times we've seen, hey, why are more of these deals closing? We listen yeah. to listen to some of those calls. Yeah, you got to answer the phone better. You got to get back to people yeah. quicker. But we use call rail. We can tell where these leads are coming from. It will say Google organic, Google ads. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of ways, but call rail is a wonderful way to yeah. track calls. And a lot of times, Hey, maybe it's two twice as many leads from a call yeah. as it is from a, a um, a form. Yeah. So there's a lot of calls coming in for yeah. contractors. And another big tip, this is applies to SEO too. Uh, just general digital marketing, ask people, Hey, what did you search to find me? Mm. Um, what, cause you can't look in Google ads. You can't necessarily know the exact search term mm -hmm. that they did. You can just find the keyword that triggered that search term. Dude, so I love that. ask people, Hey, what you, how'd you find us? Maybe, you know, it's Google ads. What'd you search to find us? If you're, you've got a good relationship with them. It's like, Hey, what made you click on my ad instead of, instead of, uh, so-and-so's ad or, or whatever, yeah. cause you can get as much data as you want, but. Data tells one story, people tell another story. So throw that in the call script for people calling in. Um, all right, we got a question from Tyler. Is there a way to hide those keywords throughout your web page, or do they always work, uh, or, or do they best work when they are visible to the user? Um, you want them to show up. That's my sister, Ty. Oh, nice. Hi, Ty. Yeah. <laughs> um, you want your keywords to show. Um, so, I mean, there might be a sneaky way to like put a keyword on a white wall or yeah. something like that, but really Google's wise to that now. Yeah. And I mean, if people are searching and they're triggering your keyword roofing contractor, they want to see roofing contractor frequently. Um, it just makes sense for them to be able to see that. Absolutely. Um, Tyler says, follow up. Thanks. Does it make sense to have soft conversions or easy conversions to help the quality score? 
this gets a little, mm-hmm. hey, he's a little bit more sophisticated. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, geez. Um, but I would say this, I would watch out for that. I think it really muddies the data. Yeah. I think when you put soft conversion, like I've, I've had, I've seen ad accounts where somebody or like just Maybe a Google views. analytics in, in, in general, and they'll be like, if you get to the contact form, like contact page, that counts as a conversion or like, you know, it really muddies the, wor- yeah. the water. Like, I'm sorry, but getting to the contact mm-hmm. form is not a conversion. Spending two minutes on a page is not a conversion. There's, yeah. there's ways to set that up. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I think people had the idea that if you, if you do that and it counts as a conversion or something like that, that it somehow helped. Yeah. You, like your, your it has traffic. to make sense. Yeah. Like doing it for the sake of like trying to game the system, probably not. Um, but if there is some sort of soft conversion that you want to track and have attribution for, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily do that to try to throw Google off or improve quality mm-hmm. scores. Uh, cause in the long run, it's just going to be confusing if it's not actually important to you. Yeah. You just really want to track the main, main things. Yeah. Um, all right. Ty says, once you identify those items, words or specific spots, they are that are yielding better results than others. Is there a way to go in and, and change things within your ads to put more budget behind those things? So yeah. do, you, do yeah. you want to, I mean, I guess answer that one. Yeah, so going back to like optimizing, our biggest strategy is what's working, put more money towards it. Mm. What's not working, take money away from it or switch it, test it in a different way. This keyword's not working with exact match. So let's try it with um, phrase match. Or if you have a a breadwinner that's pulling Mm. in lots of conversions or you have an ad type, a call ad, use more call ads or use that key, put more budget behind that specific keyword. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about how is it performing, put more money there, and then you're going to be making money and it's more money in the long run to experiment with and try other things to see what else wins too. Let's just kind of talk through this one more time here. We're talking about how do you track and click the conversions? I just want to kind of note here mm-hmm. that this is the key to everything. Yeah. Tracking clicks and conversions. Um, I guess I'm trying to point at this. <laughs> tracking clicks and conversions and making sure that you're really spending more money on the things that are making money. Yeah, it's actually a little bit simpler than a lot of people realize because you can identify which things click uh, that people clicked on and converted on Mm -hmm. through Google ads. There's a lot of ways to figure that out. Um, I guess a question for you is, let's say you have two services you're offering, let's say siding and roofing. Yep. And you really want to sell more siding for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Um, But roofing is the thing that's getting leads right now sure um but you have a siding crew or something that you need to keep busy i don't know whatever it happens to be um is it worth just dumping money into this or do you kind of have to figure out how to rebalance and push it on the thing that's coming from google ads yes let's say that yeah so i mean a kind of a soft strategy might be on your roofing landing page maybe you include a section about siding if that's what's getting a lot of traffic um i think the most kind of, it depends on how siding is performing. If you're not getting clicks because siding is performing really bad, then you need to optimize your account before you put more money into it. You need to optimize that campaign. Um, If it's performing really well, you've got a really high click through rate. Maybe it's not a lot of conversions, but the conversion rate is high. Put more money towards it. Take money away from roofing, put it into siding. You can always put that money back into roofing. Um, So yeah, if it's working well, put more money in it if you want more leads there. If it's not working well, test things out, make optimizations, and then put more money towards it. So I'm gonna invite you guys one uh, last time here. Please comment below if you have any questions whatsoever. We'd love to answer those questions. And I will ask a a separate question of you. I think about, um, we talk occasionally on the YouTube channel about Home Advisor, Mm -hmm. Angie Leads, and a lot of their they're spending a lot of money on Google ads. Mm-hmm. They're also making the city <laughs> um, lists like for Google organic. So they're right. doing, they're doing Google really hard. Yeah. So talk to me about that. Like yeah. why are they so willing to spend money on Google 
and then sometimes contractors just spend money on them. Is it? Yeah. Are they really providing a service or are they just being a middleman? They're, they're the middleman. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, I mean, and that's not to say that they're not good at it yeah. because they, I mean, they are, if you look at the, there's a thing called auction insights, yeah. you can basically see how, who else is bidding on those keywords and how well you're doing in comparison to them. Home Advisor, Angie, they're always there. They have to be spending, you know, hundreds of thousands. But if of you, but if you can spend, let's say it makes sense for them to spend mm -hmm. even more on a conversion. Yeah. Um, than we would, because right. then they can, they just sell that lead higher. Yeah. Like four times they sell right. the same lead. Oh yeah. That is <laughs> so like literally like, so think about that. Like, um, that that's really the, to me, the key to why you want to do this yourself and why you want to get good at it. I'm not saying you have to use hook agency. No, I'm just saying you will you should, like, but this, yeah. this really is a, is a, um, is something that we need to get better at. And if we're just paying these other like entities, like yeah. home advisor or Angie's leads, or whatever they are yeah. now, um, it, you're basically paying a middleman that's selling it four times. Yeah. The, Go to the source. Basically, this is a this is might be a spicy take, but if you're using Angie and or Home Advisor, um, the only reason that you can't get those leads is because you don't want to spend the time to yeah. learn how to do Google Ads or pay someone else to manage that account for you. Um, that's not a shot at anyone because it makes sense. It's quicker. It's easier. But um, if you think about, they're literally just they're doing the same exact thing that roofers are doing on Google ads, but they're taking the conversions they get and they're selling them for more. If contractors got wise to home advisor, Angie leads, and actually just started spending the effort and time to get higher on Google and, and got good at Google ads, mm -hmm. there's a chance it would put Angie leads out of business. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know what other kind of ventures they have their hands. Well, it's there. IAC is the parent company <laughs> and they have like five other key things, yeah. but they, they own like modernize.com. They own um, Nextdoor. They own like a ton of yeah. these things and they're taking leads from all those places. Yeah. So they just buy these up yeah. and then they take leads and then they sell them four times. Yeah. But I just like my real take on this is that I think it drives people's quality down. If you're a contractor using these, it can drive your quality down because you have to bid just yet your commodity bidding yeah. against three other contractors. Right. If you are doing it though, I do suggest like same with these it's speed, uh, speed to lead. Yeah. It's really about getting back no matter who this is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to, where you get your lead, whether you get it from Angie leads, whether you get it from Google ads, whether you get it from organic, getting back to them quick. And I just have to, sometimes I'm just the voice of a homeowner. Yeah. Like we want you to get back to us quick. We want to talk to you now. If we're thinking about it, we'd like to talk to you now. So contact them, figure out how they want to be contacted. And they might be, they might be shopping. They might be window shopping just because yeah. they fill out a form on your ad. Doesn't mean they haven't done that on five other ads. Yeah. So especially with, with paid, yeah. maybe organic, you have a little bit more time to play with. Yeah. Maybe the intent is a little bit higher, but uh, with paid, I mean, you got to get on those leads as fast as possible. Because if you wait a week, that would be like nightmare scenario. You're going to call them and they've already had three other contractors that have been willing to be out to their house by now. Um, and I think a little bit of something, I'm just going to challenge people a little bit. If you're a contractor that doesn't want to grow, um, I think it, it does not, it doesn't make sense to spend a ton of money on this stuff because ultimately yeah. it does take more staff. You know, it takes more salespeople to talk to those leads. Yep. It takes, um, it takes admin staff to support your salespeople. You mm -hmm. got to watch Like if you're not going to grow, if you're not planning on growing and on leading yeah. and treating your people well and stuff like that, to spend a ton of money on these things might not make a ton of sense long-term. Like you might just like be filling in a pothole for now. Right. You're not resurfacing that road. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because I mean, it, even if it's like we don't have time for these leads, but let's just get them in the door. It goes back to the point of like yeah. they're not going to be there for the month. unless you're so calling freshness. them and, and yeah. like s cultivating relationships. But that just seems like a lot of money to spend to build a funnel for a year from now or yeah. whatever. That might make sense on referrals. I mean, to contact talk to those people because they're like, when I do this, I'm going to do it with you. Yeah, that's the vibe. But for ads and anything that comes in through your website, mm -hmm. generally. 
it's going to be really about the freshness. Yeah. Think of that lead as it's 100% when it comes in. Five minutes later, it's 90%. You know, mm -hmm. two hours later, it's 80%. Two days later, it's like 20%. Right. You know, you really don't have a ton of time yeah. um, in this process when it comes down to leads. And that's that's a that's almost a weakness of Google Ads. Mm -hmm. Will you give before we uh, we wrap up here, will you give any other weaknesses of Google Ads? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the biggest weakness is you have to be willing to test and to test, you have to spend money. Yeah. So if you're starting off and maybe you're as, like, again, a one man band or something, you, you don't necessarily have as much like money to work with. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little bit longer to test. Mm -hmm. And so it can be Google art ads aren't like snap leads. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be willing to take a little bit of time with them and spend a little bit of money to test. So that is a big drawback for people that are really, really new in their business or um, maybe their budget's already being spent somewhere else. Okay. Uh, that's a big one. Why should a uh, contractor use a contractor specific marketing agency if they're thinking about doing Google ads like hook agency? Uh, I think in any industry working with a, a niched agency is really important because I don't have to in for hook agency, I don't have to relearn what types of keywords to go after for a roofer. I've seen 19 account, I mean, way more than that actually. Yeah. I've seen hundreds of accounts that are focused on getting roofing leads. Yeah. So if I can plug and play and I have all these learned strategies for roofers or plumbers or electricians, it just is that much less communication that you and I have to do, the contractor. Uh, and it's also less of a learning period. I wanna cut out how much money I have to spend to test. Uh, testing is great. I want to spend money to do it. But if I already know in this account, it worked perfectly well and it's for roof replacements, um, it wouldn't make as much sense to go to a, a food marketing agency and be like, hey, can you do my roofing? Hey, we have a food marketing agency downstairs. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. I wasn't taking a shot at them. But. No. Uh, what uh, if, if somebody wanted to just see what could be available through Google ads, how could they, is there anything that Hook does for them? Yeah. Yeah, so we do a, a an opportunity report. Basically, we look at your service area, your primary services. And we get an idea, a loose idea of kind of how much you'd want to spend, and we can do all the research for you. That keyword research, pull together, pull together the data, and give you an idea. Hey, if you spend this much money plus our retainer, this is roughly what we can expect in terms of return on investment and how many leads you'll get from it. We'll do that for free. For free. No way. Or free. So comment beneath here if you want to if you want a free PPC opportunity report. Vinny will put it together. Uh, he'll do a little keyword research and figure out how much you could make from Google Ads. Hey, we really appreciate you guys watching. Some people are just being nice and supporting us, uh, commenting. We really appreciate that. Anytime we do a live, we'd love to get your questions. We are, we enjoy this. This has been a good time, Vinny. Yeah. You, yeah, you literally gave away a ton of value for people <laughs> yeah. watching this back later. I'm sure that it will also be really awesome for them if they're doing yeah. some Google ads. Watch this back. Save this. Send this to your PPC guy. Send this to uh, somebody else in your company that is trying to do some Google ads right now. Send this to your friend that's a contractor and potentially you, you could help save them some pain because, hey, we've gone through a lot of pain. Uh, in regards to Google ads, we've learned a ton of things. We're constantly learning all the time mm -hmm. to be real. There's failure, you know, there's failure and there's growth, but in general, we say, because we're doing this for so many roofers mm -hmm. and other contractors that the failure is in the right direction, right. you know, and you're learning and you're kind of learning in a narrow uh, field so that all of the failures build into your long-term success. And I think that that's one of the other best parts about using a, a niched agency. Yeah. And feel free to reach out if you have questions, maybe you didn't want to ask them on a live feed or something like that. Shoot me a DM on LinkedIn or Facebook or Tim. Um, and we will absolutely, I'll take a look at your ad account if you want. We can, we can chat about anything ad related. Awesome. Appreciate you guys very much for joining us. Have a great day and have a great Thanksgiving. Bye.